Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, oh look who's there. Hi. Hi, Lori Thompson. <laughs> hey, uh, How are you? How are you doing, man? Uh, I, uh, do I look okay? Do I look? I don't look pale today. Do I? No, no, no. You look fantastic, Mon. Because I was balancing the the color, and I just yeah. felt I looked too green. You look green. No, your couch is green, but you're not green, and I'm green. green. Yeah, I but guess. I we're guess. we're hogging all the green. You couldn't be green if yeah, you wanted to. That's right. So I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little tired today. You'll have to excuse me. But last night I. For some reason, I don't know why. I don't have a bad back, okay? Now, I have a little, but when you don't have one, you're lucky, man. No, but it's been raining, and it's been cold. And all of a sudden, yesterday, my back started killing me. And then this torn meniscus, which hasn't bothered me that much, was just, it was agonizing, Rage. right? So, yeah. so Marjorie gave me one of her, her pain pills, her heavy pain pills that she uses the for The good bad. stuff? Yeah, the Does good, it have the, oxy in it? <laughs> I, I, I think it used to. Uh, but it's uh, a yeah, it's, before they made it politically it's, correct. It's a different kind now. Uh, and so I took it, and for some reason, I don't know about that drug, whatever it is, I have a hard time sleeping on it. And so That's all night unusual. long, you ever have those nights where you, you do sleep, but you think you're awake? Right, it's not documentable sleep. Oh, yeah. man, I was just, I'm, <laughs> and so I'm loopy right now, you know, but we'll have a couple of nice conversations here. You're getting Who's ready that? to go to California, right? I am, and I've got to say, it always amps my anxiety. I mean, if I'm going to take a plane 20 miles, um, it always amps my anxiety. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. it well, the, it used to be, you know, it used to be when I was a kid, you'd go to the airport, you'd walk down a hall, and at the end of it, there was an airplane, and you got on it, and it took off. Heaven. Yeah, close to. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not that way uh, anymore. No, and plus it's the, I'm trying to keep it all in a carry-on bag. Yep. And, and uh, so I've packed and unpacked, like, 15 times and I've got it down to this carry-on now but you imagine yourself in every situation is like well I want to look cool I don't want to look dumb so I don't have the shoes to make me look really cool so I gotta modify well, you're this. going you're going to you know, the worst kind of thing you could go to for for pressure you're, you're going to you're going to kind of a reunion yeah and so exactly you want to look better than all the other people or just as good you know, I'll settle for just as good. Yeah. Uh, so you 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 know you get all dressed up, and shall I wear this? And what kind of shoes shall I wear for that? And uh, that's why I don't go to those things. <laughs> you know, especially if you're coming, if you fly. And but now Lisa, Lisa Carr is going to be there. I'm delighted to see, it. and she's driving in from Vallejo. She can change her clothes ten or twelve times before she. Decides. Well, this is, this is a live 105 um, uh, reunion, is it? Is that what yeah. it's called? And uh, it uh, what's interesting is nobody invited me to it. Well, Ben, they re I told them I would relay the information, which I have, yeah. um, over the time. And that's right. uh, just sometimes people get, they, they get, they lose track of folks because the email's not current or something like that. And it's not, believe me, it's not intentional. Yeah, well, and that's anyway, what, anyway, I, w I probably wouldn't have gone anyway, you know, because... Sure. Because so, to begin uh, with, here in New York, you have to find the exit. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> you, you knew how you got into New York, but you can't remember how to get out. Yeah. It's yeah. like the Hotel California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, that was, uh, that, that's, that's my biggest problem. And the other thing is, I was going to make the little video for them, but then I figured, I don't know what to say, so I'm not going to do it. 
you know. Oh, then that would have been fun. No, just, but just, I just give everybody also, give everybody my best. Okay. And, and tell them that I'm too old and infirm to make the trip. I you won't know. tell them that. You know. I'll just say he had a pressing meeting uh, with uh, the executive branch, something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, something good yeah. that'll cause cause that buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what you want to do at a reunion, cause them buzz. Why are they doing? Is the, is there a year? Attached to this for the reunion? I mean, is it so many years since or whatever? Or? I don't think it's that specific. So, because people that have just started working there, from my understanding, will be there. It's all going to meet some new people. And my favorite kind of thing where I know some of the people, I'll meet some new people. And the, I think a lot of people from the past, because um, uh, I looked kind of at the list, but like uh, Rick Stewart, Big Rick, and uh, his wife, Vidya, who also worked for us. Mm -hmm. It was like, they live in Vegas now, so it was like, well, I'm coming. See, this is the trump card that we would both get to play. Yeah, I'm coming all the way from Florida. And uh, so then when someone's coming from Vegas, I said, <laughs> throw that in their mug, you know? Yeah, well, also, I don't want to leave uh, here because I prefer the homeless in New York to the homeless in California. Oh, it's a better brand of homeless? Better, better <laughs> brand of homeless, yeah. yeah. More resilient people. Yeah. They don't bitch about being homeless. <laughs> I, remember, I remember once years ago, I'm walking down the street and this guy, we, we used to call them, they were, you know what beggars are called actually? Mendicamps. Mendicamps? Yeah. Well, you drove them Mendicants. Out. Like Mendicants, that's it, Mendicants. Okay. And uh, this mendicant comes up to me with his hand out and says, can you give me a quarter? I'm trying to buy a yacht. <laughs> How can you resist I that? gave him a dollar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, that, by four. <laughs> that, that's, that's too brilliant, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, like, I'm yeah. more prone to give someone, if they have a sign that says, who am I kidding? I want to buy a beer. <laughs> yeah. And I'll give them, you know, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. That'll that'll turn on you, fella. Yeah. But yeah. But you know, so I you know, um 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 it, give them my best and uh I, I would oh, yeah. I just I couldn't I can not get what to say, you know. In the well, you're on the spot, plus it's different when you're at it like I'll try I'm gonna try to zoom you, you know, just get a few people that you know and Kind of line them up like a producer would oh, do. Oh, sure, do that. I'd love to do yeah. that. Yeah, I, I thought I thought you might get a what kick time? Out of that. What time is the thing out there? It's four to six, and so that is California time, which would obviously be my. It'd be seven to. Okay. Be seven well, and to that, nine? that's on s Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. I'll be here. Okay. Okay. I ain't well, leaving. I never. I never leave the house anyway. So you know. Well, you know, you got all your stuff. Plus, you haven't you know, tripped out. I I can't walk anymore. Really, I'm telling you the truth. Because I took that fall, okay? Yeah. Then my knee got all banged up, and then it got infected. And then I, I'm on antibiotics now f to clear clear it up, okay? Yeah. Then I also pulled the meniscus in my knee. I had a bad knee, but then they put cortisone in there, but that doesn't take care of the meniscus. And uh, I, I just, between all of those and the fact that I take certain medications that, you know, I have the neuropathy and whatever i find it hard to walk because i, yeah, I don't have balance you know that, see that's it it takes away the confidence of walking yeah. and so, when like bring my yeah so i'm walking with a cane now not not well today i needed it because of the cold and everything that was hurting but i i just carry it now ever since that fall just for me to feel Safe, so confident, yeah, yeah, and secure and safe. You know, yeah, but, but I, I, I haven't needed it. I haven't fallen. You know, although I did fall yeah. again, but in this apartment, in this room, right after the show, well, I have I have this green screen back here, right, and and uh, I had it down, uh, but it's a uh, it rolls up. It's in a big thing, and I I tripped over it and some more bruising and you know. Muscle memory. See, after I sprained that ankle, now I fall to the ground. Boom. I mean, no warning, no anything. It's really? instant, and my face is on the pavement. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that's well, only wonderful. Happened. That's what's happened to us, folks. That's yeah. what's happened to us. You well, know? I've kind of learned to sense it now, and I can usually recover and then, you know, make a big deal like, oh, look what was in my way. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I worry a little bit that, you know, that I, I just don't. Uh, I, I'm getting. 
getting older and older and older. <laughs> well, I know, and we got the, but those, you know, it's a, it's a fun option because I have prayed since I was 12, I think, to age gracefully. I still don't know exactly what it means, mm. but. Have I, aged, have I aged gracefully? I think you've aged great. I do think you've you're aged You're lying through your teeth, lady. I am not. Oh, you're no. not. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You so there. Not. It's Lori's word. Lori says well, S-E-Z. If Lori says S-E-Z. I was going to, if I ever had a website, it would probably be that. You know, just me and my my mental meanderings. Yeah. But uh, yet, you know, why that happens is muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Like, even your body has a little of it when you go in for surgery, even though you're not out and you don't feel it, your body remembers those things. And so I don't know, it's something about my, like with a sprained ankle, my ankle starts to roll and it happens so quickly that uh, you don't really? notice it. Really? Yeah, you just, and all you can do I is- I don't have that. You know what it, my, mine is, is just simply that as you get older, there's the Pers the thing that happens to you is you lose balance, and you do? yeah, I mean, I, I especially some of the drugs I'm taking helps with that. That know. will. But I mean, I don't feel confident that I have the balance. That's that's what really is bothering me now. Yeah. You know? That's what that's what the best the thing about aging you really have to work to keep your confidence up, and when we yeah. take confidence in our body uh, for granted. Yeah. And. Right. Yeah, you just have to maintain mm -hmm. that, and meditation helps, uh, prayer helps, yeah. uh, you know, all kinds of things can help you with that confidence, because when you had a bad fall, you know, your confidence is a little chipped. Yeah, well, that fall was not a good one, not a good one. No, I, mean, I know, as if there's a good fall. <laughs> well, that was so fun I was it. thinking that, you know, if they really cared about older people, they would make the sidewalks out of rubber. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why not have them made out of a, a, so, a, a softer material rather like than this hard pavement, you know? Yeah. With, with, that, with concrete that isn't smooth, it's ridged so that when you fall, it's like a razor shaving off an inch of your arm, you know? Oh, yeah, I know, or asphalt, you know, so you can have a pebble permanently lodged in your cheek. Yeah. Now, do you, do you believe in coincidence? I believe uh, things happen. It's just like on a loop. There was a Kurt Vonnegut line about a, a loop. And I think that given the multiple, multiple times that this civilization, civilization has mm -hmm. turned over, um, there it's going to kind of establish some patterns in the universe. Yeah, well, let, me, let, me, let me tell you my latest. Now, you know, so, my, yes. my biggest, what can I call it? The biggest coincidence uh, that I ever had was when I was sitting at home in, in San Francisco mm -hmm. and there was a guy known as a subway shooter who went down into the subway and shot a bunch of kids, shot at a bunch what? of kids, right? In New York, right? In New York, in New right. And I'm trying to remember his name now. I forgot it. Uh, but then again, that's my brain right now. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but... Um, he he, uh, he went down and he shot uh, Bernie Getz. That was his name. And so somebody oh. calls me up and 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 says, uh, "Did you hear about that subway shooter?" I said, "Yeah." They said they finally caught him. He said, uh, "Do you, and you know where he lives? He lived in the building you lived in." Whoa! And he probably lived right above you, uh, or, or below you, because were you an eight I? And I went, yes. And he went, oh my God, that's his apartment now. Oh my gosh. So I, I left the apartment. And I've always felt guilty that I had something to do with those guys, one guy being lame for the rest of his life. See, because if I know? hadn't moved out, Bernie Getz wouldn't have moved in. This is true, and if you'd cleaned with bleach, not only would you get your deposit back, Bernie Getz would have been brighter and more enthusiastic about life. He complained so He complained to my friend Al Goldstein, who got to know him, that we left the apartment in a mess. Oh, people always say that nonsense. No, oh, I can't help it if he, like, is a neat freak. Right, everybody He wants has to clean up his apartment and then the subways of people he doesn't like. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> He's taking it to extreme. So that, and, that up until now, that's been my my greatest coincidence. I figured when that happened, I wasn't going to win any lotteries, nothing. All my all the possibilities of coincidence had been spent on that particular thing. Well, I was wrong. Oh, you got another one in the pipe. I have what another one just happened. What? Well, you've heard about uh, the fact that Donald Trump now uh, is has been considered a fraud and can no mm -hmm. longer do business in the state of New York because well. the judge the judge did a summary a summary judgment, which a summary judgment is especially in civil cases. Yeah. You don't have uh, where the judge is going to have to decide uh, what's right and what's wrong. There's no jury or anything like that. It's just pleaded, pled in front of a judge, and then, you know. So he can do a summary judgment in which he says, well, looking at what you've handed me already, I can already make a decision on this, and that's what he did yesterday. He, he fraudulently yeah. inflated his, his worth or his yeah. assets, right? Okay, now you're probably wondering where this is all going. Somewhere. Okay. We had this big case with our landlord and with the apartment and the guy who rented it to us and all went on for 10, 10 years. And in the end, we wound up in court, of course, before a judge because we couldn't suss the thing out. And um, guess who the judge was? Who? Same one. The same one. <laughs> <laughs> judge and Garin. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, that's well, especially things seem so big. The world seems so big. Yeah. But I've learned as I travel more that uh, and see if you've been raised in the church, which I was, yeah. um, you see things as not mere coincidences, but um, a blessing, a charmed life, um, just, you know, something yeah. that but, happened. But this, this, you know, it, when I saw this happen, uh, you know, it was this judge. Uh, because I was watching TV and they showed the the paper, you know, the the uh, decision, and it's a judge in Goran, and I went, oh my God, that's my judge. It's and, a small and, world. And, in spite of the fact that you know we can't we came out okay on the deal, uh, I, at the end when we were had we had decided what we were going to do, and we had made peace with everybody, the landlord and this guy, and they still had to go on together against each other. Uh, the judge pulled us into the into his office, and we sat there and we talked for about 10, 15 minutes. And he is really a nice guy. You know, cool. Genuinely a nice say. guy, but he doesn't put up with any crap. Yeah. And there was some crap, say, from the landlords in his decision. He just railed against the landlord, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, in the case of Trump, he did exactly the same thing. In fact, he was so mad at them, he supposedly at one point was pounding his fist on the on the de desk because Whoa. he couldn't he couldn't stand. He said, "I won't put up with these kind of lies in my courtroom." Oh, it sounds like suits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you and he he admonished his lawyers and said, "You should know better than this." You know, Whoa, take oh, it off the gloves. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so that's my that's my coincidence. Well, yeah. they're good and they're, uh, they uh, definitely good. not winning the lottery now. No, you know, for, don't even buy a ticket. Uh, but this yeah. sounding, <laughs> you know, this this dilemma that you encountered uh, sounds like a Key West Wenzel situation. There is so much craft and grift down there. Like I where sublet, where. Uh, Key West. I Key lived West? there for about a year. Worked at a really fun station. Oh, so you lived you lived in Key West. So you lived uh, near um, Hemingway's home, right? I did with the cats. With the and the cats are still the well, the, not the same yeah. cats, but the, they're, the their legacy, the their lineage. Few, few generations later, because he had how many cats? He had. Oh, they, well, so you know how cats are. You know, they they think they own the place, and they do soon. And they do. But yeah. assertiveness. But my mom, when she came down, you know, when you live there, you don't really do a lot of that tourist stuff. But my mom you went to down. the very tip of the United States. Oh, yeah. There's a big buoy that says you are at the southernmost tip of the United States. Mm -hmm. And it, people get pictures there. I think I even have one when I first moved. But there I sublet from a guy that I found on the Internet or maybe just found by word of mouth. 
and he had a food truck. So he said, yeah, come down to my food truck, I called him, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll, I will rent you this part. It was half an apartment yeah. Yeah. for $1,000 or nine ninety, And so it was great. Little did I know that he was a career fraudster, and his specialty was identity theft. So he, I gave him a big deposit because he said the rent would be, he would take some off the rent. Well, all the money I paid him, it was somehow uh, he was doing a pyramid scheme and keeping his money in the air and using my money to fund and then pull in other scams. So it was none of the money that I gave him was going to our our rent. And so and this went on for about well, wait a minute, wait a minute now, but he owned the apartment. No, oh. he didn't. He had sublet it to me. Oh, oh one of fell. those deals. Oh, forget yeah. it. And it was and in Key West, you just if you're moving there, you know, you got to really uh, you need something rather rather quickly. And the rent because like hotels are 300 and 400 a night, you know, and so that's a consideration when you're taking a sublet. There's an urgency to take a sublet. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And then he came to me and I'm such a naive Midwesterner sometimes still that he said, if we pay rent in advance, then it will be a bigger discount and we'll only have to pay this much. The landlord oh, so, said, so what oh, you're saying is he then got your money but yeah. didn't pay his rent. Exactly. And so this and he the way he tiered it um, was at you know the first couple months it was one scam, but he learned the second and third and fourth he, months he saw, required he, he, he saw was, he saw a real sucker coming along, he didn't did. he? I say it but he did oh boy. and so i when i contacted the state's attorney because he forged he got into my checks mm -hmm. um without me knowing obviously and forged one for 10 grand and thankfully my bank in beautiful bloomington illinois thank you nancy ammerman um at heartland bank caught it and she said Lori, we have a check here you know for ten thousand dollars and we don't think it's your signature on the check i said well who's it made out to and they told me his name. I was like, well, that's my roommate, and I think we need to have a sit down. And so when I called the state's attorney, or I, I said, I'm looking for his name. And they said, so are a lot of people when you've just been ripped off. You know, you don't. Really? But they caught it. They, they did not honor that 10 grand check. I love Harlan. But they, um, you know, but, but that was a pattern. And then I found out he had done time in several states for such things. So, oh, so so what happened? Had to, I guess you had to get out of the apartment, right? Oh, I did. Yeah. And uh, it was just a nightmare. Like I related to you when you were describing your situation because it's a nightmare. You go to sleep not knowing if you're going to come back tomorrow with your house padlocked. Right. And it's I mean, I have nightmares about it. It's a different place. But and it's in different places, but it's always no. The same I always thing. have that great fear uh, because uh, you know we, we're in this situation where we have a landlord that would love they 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 every day I think they say a prayer uh, because they're they're devout Jews uh, that that we're going to die. Okay, does that that sound very Jew worthy? Well, because they want us to not be here. They love us not to be here. Right, because, but to pray for your downfall. Because the judge. The same judge, Judge Engerin, his decision was <laughs> that he considered that the the landlords were being fraudulent, and that uh, in a way of punishing him, he rolled back the rent to what it was in two thousand three, to five hundred dollars and seven cents a month. Baby, okay. Score. So now it's two years later, and they have to renew that lease. We have to renew the original lease, right? Yeah. No, yeah. they suddenly send us a, a renew, lease renewal for twenty six hundred dollars a month. So that would be more than five times the amount. Uh, more than yeah, more, it, it doesn't matter. It's supposed to be based on the lease that they sign. Sure. Well, that wasn't. We've been trying to get them to send us a new renewal. If we don't sign the renewal, they can then throw us out of here. But the fact is, we've now done a lot of things to prove that we're taking action. My lawyer, you know, it, 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 it and by the way, they it just uh, exhausted their last possible appeal 
Uh, so uh, they're they're through. They got it. They got to live up to this. And we can't. I still haven't seen my renewals changed. You know. Can you? So you just tell your lawyer, hey, this guy is not doing. Oh no, this. the lawyer's doing what he's got to do. He sent him a Good. letter saying you got to do this. You've exhausted every appeal. You know, this is the law. Send us a renewal. And this, we haven't seen it yet. You know. Yeah, lawyers are like that agents they cost a lot but they get you more well in, in, in this case I, I don't think i've gotten more but i've gotten something <laughs> right you've gotten something that but, you, can live you know i mean it's just a lot of work just a lot of work hey i just saw that we've just run out of time can you believe well, that can it, you believe that it flies when you're having food no you, it, no i can i just have a great conversation with you can we uh, make a date to do this next week Oh, let's. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson. Bye, Lori. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lori. Uh, actually, that was a repeat of Lori. I'm going to tell you why. I got a thing from Lori today because we're supposed to record today. And she says, I can't. And I said, Why? And she says, uh, I hit my eye, my cornea on something. And then she had to go to a doctor and they put a patch over her eye and they gave her antibiotics and they gave her pain medicine. And well, she just couldn't record a, a thing for us today. So we decided to run a rerun. That's why I was talking about the middle of winter. Okay. All right. Anyway, you know, I got one person here is trying to call. Let's see if we know who this person is, because I don't recognize that person. Here they are, and let's see if they show our, their face. Are they going to show their face? They're not going to show their face? Okay, then I'm going to remove them right now. Okay, remove. Okay, there we go. Uh, and, uh, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, wait a minute, CB. Oh, see, I didn't know that was you, okay? Uh, uh, can you talk to us? Are you giving us an audio at all? I got there, audio. There you How's go, that? there you go. Sound good? Okay, all righty. Well, I didn't know, I didn't know it was her. He, let's let everybody else in here, too, because I, when you, when you use a different name, it screws me up. So if you can, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I will come back in. No, I'm no, no. To, don't. No, well, nobody else no, will recognize no, me. No, don't call so. back in. Don't call back in. Just right over on uh, your name, you can do rename, and you can put okay. your actual name there. Okay. Okay. I see the rename. I never had to do a rename. Yeah, just rename okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. H I L Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who who is that are you talking about joe meyer i never heard of him i never heard of him. oh yeah not in a long time you know somebody sent me a message with a picture of the vice president candidate for kamala harris and they look a lot alike who like phil meyer yeah him and Phil Meyer, same glass frame and uh, same balding and all that kind of stuff. They I mean, do just look a lot of like. Balding and he wears glasses. He doesn't look a bit like Phil Meyer. Oh yeah, he does. I don't know if I still have the picture. I email it to you. Somebody just. Matter. I know it wasn't Phil. As soon as he opens his mouth. Oh, I know it wasn't Phil too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, we have a new vice president uh, uh, nominee. What do you guys think of him? I love him. I think it's great. Well, you'd like anything the Democrats do. <laughs> okay. No, he passed all kinds of progressive things in Minnesota. Yeah, I I'm think, with Charlie. I, I, I think you know was. that. I used to talk about, uh, I, last week I was talking all about walls. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I uh, uh, he seems to be okay. He seems to be an amiable chap, yeah. you know, uh, who has done a lot of nice things. If I can get my... I, I have my my. Uh, I, I'll, I'll just e email it to you if you want. I, I have a. I don't know if you can see it. The the, the uh, kind of 
bright. brightness is way up on my phone. Let's try and lower the brightness temporarily. Well, that, uh, does that mean the pe person handling the phone? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> yeah, that's that. me. Uh, mm. Anyway, hello, Josh. How are you? Good. How you doing? We see you on a uh, on a on a on a uh, Wednesday because you're available Wednesday and Thursday, but not Friday. Uh, this yeah, correct. I mean, am I getting your schedule down? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it. This week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's oh, it been? Oh, two, three years? I don't know. <laughs> Does that look like Phil Meyer? No, that looks like walls. You can't really see from that little tiny picture. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, let's do That's our okay. whole show holding we, up pictures from our iPhones. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I was going to, I was telling you about, um, what's her name? Um, the, uh, Lori. And hold on a second. I can show you here. Here is, uh, if you want to see pictures, uh, hey. here's, uh, here's Lori. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, let me see. My God, of course. Oh, here we go. Here is the picture of that Lori has. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There we go. Oh, don't show pictures of her with her eye patch. Well, you'll see her next week without an eye patch. But that was her, yeah. that was her excuse, and I'll, I'll accept it. Okay. She you know. didn't want to. Anybody to see her looking like yeah. that? <laughs> She's not that vain a person. She wouldn't mind me showing that. I'm. I'm. Then I why she been on? Mind, she would have been on. She would have been on. Yeah. No, she wouldn't been on because she was in pain. Ah. Oh. She told oh. me she was she in pain doctor. and the eye was hurting her, and so because of that, she didn't say because I don't want people to see me this way. Oh, okay. Hey, well, I wouldn't want anybody to see it, me with an eye. It's eye. always fun to be seen in a pathetic light. You know, so uh, and uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, okay, so we got uh, we got uh, we got uh, a bunch of people here. Did we did a good start. Good start. Let's see if anybody else calls. Uh, no, but uh, you so you you like Walls? You think he's okay? Okay, he's great. All right. I, I have a Why? question for Charlie though. I liked Walls, but um, I was listening to Roland Martin. Um, and he had said that uh, blacks in general were uh, having issues because of the riots and bringing in the the uh, military and all that. And you know, I guess it was the National Guard. But what, oh, what you what's your take on it, Charlie? No, I think that's BS because he did bring in the National Guard. Trump never brought in the National Guard. So how are they going to use that against him? Well, they they thought it was uh, excessive force, and then he supposedly helped to forgive the uh, the, the police department. So yeah, everybody's getting too sensitive about everything. Yeah. All right. Okay. You know, I mean, yes, he, he Minneapolis was a place where that whole horrible situation took place. All right, he had to do something to quell the rioting. Yeah, you know, he had to. He didn't want other people to die. If he didn't quell the rioting, they'd be yelling at him today about that. Well, they were mostly yelling at him because he uh, helped to um, allow either no sentence or a lighter sentence or something for no. the police officer. A life imprisonment. How was that? Was it? Yeah, I would say, what's oh, yeah. Yeah. Never got all. Okay. Yeah, life imprisonment. I don't know what lighter. By, by the way, no, 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 no. That's fine. I, I again, I, I did not follow the story after that, and I got the impression from the discussion that they were having that it was something that the black community was still, you know, uh, a little bit upset over. So I just, I'm just checking with Charlie. Right. Well, well, no, there's no problem with the uh, the black community in Austin, Texas, anyway. No. <laughs> okay. Well, of course, and Charlie, as we know, speaks for black people everywhere. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I was I was at the gym, and they had Fox going on, and they have uh, CNN going on, and a couple other stations. And the headlines for them were talking about Walt. Uh, his military background is is discovered, or something like that. 
And then they start talking about something with him in connection to China. And it's just like, oh my God, what the heck are these? They're, 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 they're grasping, exposed. they're grasping at straws. Yeah. What they're yeah, saying they say, about it, him it, and his, his military record is he served most of exposed. his military in the National yeah. Guard. Well, somebody yeah. has to serve in the National Guard, yeah. and he did it for twenty years. He, and, he, got, they, he got they, all. They keep it. saying they keep saying exposed, you know, and it's yeah. like. All the stuff they're talking about is all everything everybody knows. So I don't know what exposed. Yeah. You, you can look on Wikipedia and see it all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he made it all the way to uh, like one of the, the the top enlisted men, command sergeant major or something. I mean, very hey, very few people make. He was it. a social studies teacher. That should give him even more credibility than that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I mean, his wife is a teacher. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, what, yeah. they, she still what is. do they want? You know. But let's let's compare him to JD Vance. Yeah. That's a train wreck. You well, want to talk you about know, a train uh, 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 forget about the, them for a moment. I mean, we got to talk about our guy and if he's up to the task and so on. Uh, I the other thing that if you go over to Fox, oh, I love this one. It's a bunch of white guys. Okay, a bunch of white guys, bunch of. What we what we call uh, goyim, uh, which is a non-Jew, uh, discussing whether the Democratic Party or uh, implying the Democratic Party is anti-Semitic because they didn't uh, nominate uh, 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 what's his name from Philadelphia, from Pennsylvania, from yeah. Pennsylvania, Shapiro, 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 Shapiro as Marjorie likes to call him, <laughs> uh, Shapiro. Uh, and and there uh, the, it was anti-Semitic of the Democratic Party to do that. Listen, you goyim, shut the fuck up. You know, I mean, the leader of the Senate. Talk hmm? about power. The leader of the Senate is Jewish. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you're uh, right. Kamala's the leader of the Senate, is the Senate is Jewish. Yeah, yep. and he happens so, to be a Democrat, by the way. Who doesn't yeah. seem to complain oh, wait, about? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Kamala, she, Roberta just brought this up. Kamala Harris's husband is Jewish. He's Jewish, yeah. Well, of course, we so know how, that. Yeah. So how is this? Uh, so what well, if the, because so what it's if the always vice president it's, it's, uh, the people who yell anti-Semitism the loudest are people who are not ant, are not Jewish. Jewish. Yeah, you know, and oh, they decide they're Jewish. going to they're going to uh, determine for the, us Jews. What's anti-Semitic? Yeah. All right. So they they're, they're throwing that one around. I mean, she could she could have anybody she would have picked, they would have been on his case today. Of course. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Uh, because they're desperate. They're absolutely desperate. They don't know how to handle this situation. It's something they've never had to deal with. You know. Um, and, this guy brings a lot to the to to her. Uh, yeah. Her campaign, I think. I think he, he brings he bring he brings a certain continued lightness and joy. His first speech, the first day was great. No teleprompter. He's never used one. No, well, no. Wait a minute. He used a teleprompter yesterday. Okay. The here's the here's he, here, here's the, the, time, the yeah. here's the story. When he was being vetted, they were holding, they were having the little get together. And he said, "Well, I have to tell you one thing about me." And like they're all they're all grabbing their chairs, uh -oh. you know, because they don't know <laughs> what he's going to say. He says, "I've got a real problem." And they <laughs> went, well, "What is it?" And he said, "I don't know how to use a teleprompter." <laughs> and there was like this m massive, supposedly sigh of relief <laughs> around the room. You know, uh, he said, no, I don't know how to use a teleprompter and somebody's going to have to teach me. And so what they did is backstage before he went on yesterday, they had a teleprompter there for him to practice on. OK, so he is using a teleprompter now, but he's oh, never okay. used he's never, ever used a teleprompter. All his speeches were, you know, coming off the off top the of his head. Yeah, yeah. off the cuff. Shuts off the cuff too. Well, no. What he does is he has a teleprompter. There are words on it, but he doesn't read those words. Yeah, that's what I figure. <laughs> or he that's reads like, a couple possible. of words and then he makes up something to fill in the gaps. 
that that's yeah. what Robin Williams did all the time. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I mean, it was just amazing to me that they were, you know, they were they were blaming him for you know. This new guy, he's he's. If if I have anything against him, he's toast. You know, he's he's just crispy toast. You know, and um, he's he's a little too goody goody for me. I would like a guy with an edge, but I know that wouldn't be any good for this ticket. You oh, know. he's got an edge. He speaks his mind. You answered back all of these complaints that the Republicans. Uh, and he they, he had a, he had one good line about uh, about uh, uh, oh god I forgot now. Diddy Vans, yeah. Yeah. You mean the couch oh, thing? Oh, well, oh the couch <laughs> thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll debate him if we can get him out from behind the couch. <laughs> but, no, he he's he's definitely got an edge. Um, did, did you no. hear that morning, Joe? just ripped into him because he was he's a Shapiro person. Yeah, Morning Joe wanted uh Shapiro, yeah. Well, Shapiro was a bad idea for a couple of reasons. Number one, and uh, number one, she probably is going to win Pennsylvania without having to have a vice presidential yeah. nominee who's from Phil from Pennsylvania. If if you're going to give up the whole election because you want to get votes in Pennsylvania, you got mm -hmm. problems, okay? Um the thing is that uh, that uh, uh, he the biggest the biggest problem with uh, Shapiro was that he was Jewish and pro -pal pro uh, Israel, okay, and that would not play well. There'd be too many demonstrations out there and everything. Uh, this guy doesn't have that on his back, uh, and um, I think that was the biggest problem. Not that he was Jewish. But that he was pro-Israel, and that that, or at least perceived to be pro-Israel, and that would cause far too many problems. And so, you know, he didn't, he didn't like Netanyahu. No, he didn't like Netanyahu. But then again, I don't even think most Netanyahu, Jews that I know don't like. I, Netanyahu. I, I don't think even Netanyahu's <laughs> wife likes Netanyahu. You know, right. I mean, who could like Netanyahu? They don't like yeah. him in his own country. But the point <laughs> is. That you know you're you're either it, it, in some people's mind you're either pro-Palestinian or you're anti-Palestinian, and you can't be pro-Palestinian and pro-Israel at the same time, which you logically can be. Yeah, you I'm, know. I'm pro-Israel, and I'm not pro or against Palestinian. I just you know I'm they 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 have the right to exist. Well, I hate Israel. You know why? I, we know that they're all Jews. Is the reason yeah. why? Yeah. Well, okay. there you go. Then they're not all Jews. You know, there's a lot of Catholics and Muslims and stuff yeah. that live there. So at least twenty percent of the population. I was Jewish. kidding. <laughs> was that a joke? I'm sorry. Well. <laughs> That you, was a deadpan. You, Didn't you, you get can, it? You, <laughs> the great thing about you and jokes is you not only can't say them, you can't get them. But so, yeah, you know. Yeah, nobody got them on the panel until you said so. Mm. And, nobody, and nobody got it, you know. And what so, a, what I you. Charlie was laughing. You're starting to tell the joke. Well, he laughs at anything. <laughs> You're starting to tell the joke like me. Charlie doesn't laugh at anything. It's very hard to make Charlie laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to let everybody know there is no blood in my fecal matter. I'm screened for one more year. I just opened it up. Thank goodness I am not eating. Wait, wait, Did wait, they wait. send your fecal matter back to you? No. <laughs> one way. No, what, did you send that? Up. Was that one of those things you send in a box? You know, yeah, yeah. It's from my doctor. Because my 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 family doesn't have any cancer issues. So I get to do this yearly. Well, no, but everybody gets to do that yearly, but not put it in a box and mail it away to, you know, some poor family who needs it. What? You know, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, mean I, uh, I, I, I had a, years ago, I had a, a joke uh, that I uh, came up with a, a slogan for Goodwill Industries. You remember Goodwill Industries? And they had all mm -hmm. these big uh, collection boxes around town, and you would throw your clothes do. in there and toys. They still and, do. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and I said, the trouble is that you're just not appealing to the core audience, and you've got to change your slogan to, why not drop your load in our box? <laughs> <laughs> there is, there is Al, Alan, Alan, Alan doesn't get that. Alan gets it. Alan doesn't find it funny. <laughs> the, the a, little wife said, cute, a little cute. The wife said, "Oh, I'm going to donate clothes for the starving people," and then the guy said, "No, your how your sizes are? They're not starving." <laughs> Anyway, by the way, by the way, did you notice uh, that um, Marjorie you know, gave me that shirt with blood all over it? It looks like it's got blood yeah. all over it, and this is problem solved, yeah. which is a great T-shirt. Yeah. She had a friend who thought it wasn't funny. Mm. I mean, it was like, it wasn't just like, oh, it's not funny. It was like, that's not funny. You know, like she was upset by it. So yeah. Brian doesn't have cancer in his poop. But his State Farm insurance just got canceled. <laughs> Your insurance just got canceled? No, so what is he talking about? He just oh. saw the logo. I saw the <laughs> logo. No one makes them. funny jokes. <laughs> I thought it was good. Everything's funny to him. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so, um, um, uh, it, it, you know, uh, uh, hey, Bree, you're sitting over there in Malaysia. How does it all look to you? Do you like this guy, Walls? Um, yeah, I mean, okay. seems affable enough. So really, you think the Democrats have got a good uh, bench, as we call it, right? I think it's going to be a close election. But uh, I, I do that. believe that there will be violence. Um if and when, you know, Trump does not win, and uh, that's unfortunate. Well, then I have an idea. Let's let him win so we don't have any violence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Trump always puts the FBI down, but they find a, a, some guy that's a terrorist from another country who's here to, to assassinate him a couple days ago, and they foiled the assassination by posing as... Something as, pe as people are willing to uh, take five thousand dollars to right. kill yeah. Donald Trump, right? Right, and so you know, I do it cheaper, but you know, I'm just kidding. So, but I don't want I don't want to see him get shot. I want to see him lose at the ballot box. I don't want to see him lose. You, big. you I saw him get shot already. Good. He got shot. Yeah, but if so he gets killed, get he's shot. going to be the biggest martyr we've ever seen, and then there's yeah. sheer violence. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Every time I Trump think, opens his I, mouth, I, 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 I disagree gas. with Bree. I think it's going to be a very, it's going to be a route. That's what yeah. I'm predicting. Well, how about Me you? Uh, let's go to our real expert here, Josh. You think it could be a route? Well, I mean, it's if the momentum they have keeps building, it's possible. But I mean, you know, everything that we have as far as evidence right now says it's going to be close. You know, and the last one was close and. You know, there are still large swaths of this country that support Trump very heavily. I mean, we've talked before, even, you know, you and I personally, I mean, the neighborhood that I live in, if I just took this computer out and just drove through this housing development, you guys would lose track of the number of Trump signs, flags, banners. I mean, you wouldn't, <laughs> I think that you would be amazed. I mean, it would look like, I'm telling you right now, more people have that out than will put up Christmas lights this year. And I am not oh, exactly. I believe it. <laughs> I mean, so he has a real strong, con you know, connection in certain areas. Now, I think if we went up to downtown Columbus and we drove around the immediate neighborhoods that surround the 50-story buildings, you wouldn't see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are the people that live there going to turn out better than the people that live here? And that's going to be across all the 50 states, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, some states it's not going to matter. You know, I heard a joke this morning that said Trump was going to visit an important swing state on Friday, Montana, you know, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, which is, you know, look, he's going to win Montana, you know. I mean, yeah. so some states it's not well, going to matter. Say as, then, they say as Montana goes, so goes the nation. Sure, right. <laughs> you know? I mean... So, wow. I mean, it's very Actually. possible that what you're saying could happen, though, if 
the turnout, if the turnout gets like, if he can repeat 2008 or no, it's not he, I'm sorry. If she could repeat 2008 Obama numbers, well, yeah. Right. But mm. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, well, I think it's trending in that direction, Yeah, but it's very, very early. Yeah. Obama was on a platform for change. That was 2008. Trump was on a platform for change. I mean, drain the swamp was the same oh, yeah, theme. Yeah, you know, we, did, we didn't change over to business as usual. Let's settle everything down and have, you know, eliminate the chaos until Biden. Well, right now, it's unclear whether the message is going to be change because of the economy or business as usual. Let's end the chaos because of Project 2025 and Trump. It's well, unclear which message is going to resonate with the ones that count. Again, you know, uh, every time it's pretty much the same thing over the past few years. I mean, back aways, any state except for the hardcores could flip either way. But we know which ones are the battleground states. And mm -hmm. those states are, I mean, it, the, the numbers are going back and forth. I mean, Hillary won the popular vote, but Trump got it because of the Electoral College. And that's just going to keep happening. And so one of the reasons why they said that they picked walls is because Trump has been really campaigning hard, not just in person, but, you know, the, through yeah. emails and, and other direct mail stuff and calls into the Minnesota, uh, thinking that he could actually draw. Because if you look at um, some of the analyses that they've shown, Minnesota is so rural and so much of it. And a lot of that area has gone to Trump constantly. And mm -hmm. Biden only managed to get that one, you know, because of the major cities. Yeah. And I think that, you know, another thing that Walls, I think they hope does for them is that in an area like mine, but put those million, you know, tons of those out there across the country, I think they're hoping, you know, that if the husband goes in and votes for Trump, that his wife doesn't. Yeah. You know? Because those are votes. I mean, you know. Well, I, mean, I you know, also I, mean, I got to tell you those, those something. I got to tell you something. Let's let's look at the lay of the land right now. Uh, it's pretty it it, it's pretty unpleasant. Uh, it has been pretty unpleasant. All of a sudden, there are two people coming into this uh, game uh, with a more positive message. Yeah. And I think there are some people who are going to go. You know, I I've had enough of this yeah. Trump with his. I mean, if you think about it, Trump's message is America's in trouble. America's terrible. It's a terrible yeah. place to live. And these people are saying, no, it's a great place to live. We just got to make it that way, you well, know? That's, that's and there's a I very said. positive message. And I think that positive messaging is going to resonate with people who are just so fed up with everybody arguing with everybody else. Uh, Bree. Uh, I've been playing with the electoral map a lot. And Every time I play with it, it, it comes down to Georgia. I, I think that uh, Harris doesn't necessarily waltz into the White House. I think they can get Wisconsin and Michigan, but I think Pennsylvania is going to go Trump. And I think Nevada will go Harris waltz. I think Arizona will go Trump. And so it, for me, it comes down to Georgia. And, that, and remember, last time it did too, didn't it? So... Uh, unless, you know, mm. Trump and his operatives have figured out a way to, mm. you know, fix that problem <laughs> that they had last time. It's, it's for me, it's going to come down to Georgia. Let's see. No. And what did Trump do in from, Georgia? By the he, way, I'm, oh. by the way, I'm from Pennsylvania. And, uh, and my doctoral dissertation was on presidential press agenda setting framing theory. So not that I'm completely out, uh, out of the loop. Because uh, I haven't been there for a while, but uh, this is this is how I see it. I I don't see it's a cakewalk. Uh, Seventy five percent of the people don't know who Waltz is, and a lot don't know who Harris. There's, what you're seeing is a lot of excitement about you know they're doing the identity politics thing, and and if these people can get out and vote. But if you're you know you're watching certain media, it's completely amplified. I'll tell you. Uh, okay, when but on the other hand, on the other hand, let me stop you for a second there about Pennsylvania. Yesterday, um, uh, they held a you know a rally in Pennsylvania, 
They held it in the same auditorium that I think the day before, or a couple of days before, Trump had, had held a rally. Yeah. Go check the picture of the rally with Trump and the rally with her, and it's the night and day. There's an enthusiasm. That's what we're talking yeah. about here. Yeah, but For, was that the city? Was well, of that, course that was the city. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I want to hear what Bree was, finished Bree, because that was interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I, if you remember back in, th there were a couple elections where I thought that the candidate I voted for was sure to win, and it didn't go that way. So, you know, I, I think right now, if you're watching MSNBC, if you're, if you're, you know, YouTube in that algorithm, you definitely get this, uh, this feeling. I, and remember also, Taylor Swift was, came in on this Tennessee election. And she said, I don't like Marsha Blackburn. Let's vote for the Democrat, please. Taylor Swift, you know, and no, Marsha Blackburn won. Yeah, but who does so, Taylor Swift appeal to but a younger audience who yeah. really doesn't vote? Uh, well, they, they yeah. did turn out. Uh, they've been they've been uh, critical in these, you know, elections that come down to the wire. Uh, so I don't know. It's, it's possible. I mean, uh, 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 Josh? I mean, you know, Pennsylvania, I mean— I'm not from there, but I live in a neighboring state. Uh, you know, I, in 90 minutes, I can be in Western PA. Uh, traveled extensively throughout Pennsylvania many times. And, and, you know, Western PA and Eastern PA, they're like two different states. You know, I mean, I, I visited the Flight 93 Memorial in like 2022, maybe, uh, or late 2021, maybe November. I mean, you're talking like a year, a year and a half after Trump had lost and driving these back roads to the Flight 93 Memorial, you know, where, where it crashed. I mean, he had lost and it had been a year and a half and it was still his stuff everywhere. I mean, no one took down any banners. No one took any yard signs out. They were still paying to keep the billboards up along the two lane road. Uh, I mean, it, you know, so it, it it'll it'll just be again about that turnout but i will say that how much how much influence do you think that uh, the governor has in that state to carry well, I, that I vote that, for her i think that he has some you know now and, and somewhere like somerset pa western pa it, i don't care if he went to everybody's house and spoke to them personally you know, they're going to say, that's nice, but no, I didn't vote for, you know, it's like that thing from the West Wing, you know, didn't vote for you the first time, don't plan on voting for you the second time. You know, I mean, so. Okay, but you know, let me ask you, let me, ask, let me ask you this, uh, and I would po posit this question. They they have currently taken a new tack with Trump and with, with uh, his running mate, and that tack is calling them weird in other words, they're weird, and they are. They are. They're, they're, they're not only weird, I think I would add the term bizarre, okay? Well, yeah. Do you think that maybe people are just tired of weird? Well, uh, Charlie wants to say, so here's what I'll say is yes, because I told you before that I don't, about two years ago or so that I went to Little Rock, and I visited the Clinton Presidential Library, and my wife and I walked through there, and there were all these huge pictures and videos playing of, you know, late 1991, you know, 92 Clinton running and his family and the positivity and the young looking and the Fleetwood Mac. And I said, you know, God damn, that's that that's what we need to get back to next time. You know, not knowing what Joe Biden would do. I mean, that we have got to get back to that positivity. Mm -hmm. He was talking about family values. He was talking about jobs. I mean, he was talking about things that I swear to you, the Republicans talk about today and lecturing about how the government can't teach your children family values. You have to do it as the parent. And I mean, positivity, we will fix it. I still believe in a place called hope. And I mean, the whole deal. And I think they accidentally stumbled their way into it. You know, I mean, that's what I well, think. Well, did, didn't, didn't Obama I mean, win? Well, under I think it was in that, it was the economy. Well, that was his main deal, but that's what I'm saying was, but he, it was a positive message. I mean, listen to his convention speech where he says, you know, George Bush doesn't think America uh, exceptionalism is that great. He made fun of it. You know, he, he just doesn't get it. I do. I'm here. 
And, you know, and he, he, look, he did a really nice job at playing up the strengths of his vice president, Al Gore. I mean, right there in his convention speech, he says, George Bush doesn't have this. He doesn't have that, blah, blah, blah. Another thing he doesn't have that I have is Al Gore. You know, I mean, they really ran strong together. I mean, it was, Al Gore was younger. I mean, it was just, it was. Well, don't forget was very Ross Perot also. You know, well, right. Ross Perot I'm not also. talking about that was the results. I, but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is the type of campaign well, that they ran, for whatever the reasons, it was successful. If you win a race, whatever people say about it after it's over, you won the race. You know, so. You know, I mean, no, it was Josh, Josh is right. But it was validated you, right. in 1996. Is the point in 1996? It was validated in a landslide win over someone saying all this crap for the last four years was garbage, and people said, mm, "I don't think so." You know, so well, the success well, plan is there. No, Josh, you're you're I right, think... and I can tell you. First of all, Alex wanted to see Pete Buttigieg. Why did you want to see Pete Buttigieg? Because you like his warm, personable self, right, Alex? As Alex walks I got to go get a soda. I got to go get my but, soda. I think uh, people think, who had pause. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, what? plus on the phones, when we were doing phone banking, it's people just want to stop the chaos. They just don't. I mean, Trump and all the the wars back and forth, and all the uh, the tweets and the the stories, and they they just want okay. Let's settle down enough. Let's have something positive. I, I, I agree with Josh. This is what we were getting well, from I, the public. I I think that John McCain, Mitt Romney. Uh, you know, Dukakis, Mondale, I think they all ran positive campaigns, yeah. but they didn't win. Um, you know, were, John McCain was, the one thing I'll never forget about him was when somebody said to, uh, there was an older, elderly woman in the audience who said, he's not even from America. And John McCain stopped and said, you know, you're wrong about that man. You know, Barack Obama is a fine American and I'm, you know, I'm happy to run against him or whatnot. That was I amazing, that. I thought. I and, and that, that, that was, was one of the most amazing positive. moments in American politics in the last couple of years. I wish we had that kind Absolutely. of civility right now. You know? Yeah, I agree with you. Well, right. just what because a positive person... Looking, go ahead. Is that Trump, every time he opens his mouth, he puts his foot in it. What did he do when he went to Georgia? He sat there and kept. It's been 20 minutes talking about how bad Governor Kemp is, and Governor Kemp is very popular in Georgia. How's he going to win Georgia doing that? Governor Kemp is also a Republican. Right. I think so a, how's he going to win Georgia of, doing that? I and think a lot of what he goes about, to that no, national I mean, of, uh, black journalist thing and, and, and puts down black journalists all over the place. How's he going to win well, the black vote doing that? To, to a large extent, it's not, you know, Trump or Harris. It's the, you know, people will go in and just vote the party and, and, and they think they think when they ask people, will you be better off economically under Harris or will you be better off economically under Trump? They always select Trump. They say, I'm going to be better off rightly or you wrongly. Know, you know why you know why it. they do, though? They do simply because he was on television uh, yeah. saying he knew how to handle money. He never knew how to handle money. You can go through his entire history and he did nothing but lose money. Well, the current, po the, current polling on that, the, the current polling on that question, though, in the U.S. is currently about a 55-45 answer, actually. So it's not everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, it's running about 55-45, but then there are two or three other issues where if you ask a different question, such as about personal freedoms or you know, integrity and things like that. Harris is running at 60, 40. Yeah. Well, let, me, let, me ask, you know. let me, let me, let me ask you guys a question <laughs> and woman, a question here. Uh, and that is, uh, how important is the border question? I mean, I know I'm not asking how important is it in this election, but they make such a big deal out of it being important. And I'm saying to the average American, how's it really affecting them? It, the, the polls, it's fairly far down on the polls, except with Republicans. It's very yeah. high, and that's because it's been talked up, and yeah. it's been made one of the main points. Yeah, but it, but realistically, 
How important is that to the average American? I mean, even here in New York, well, as, a, we, as a result of that, of that whole thing that's happening at the border, uh, we've got um, unparalleled migration coming into New York, but not because they're coming here to be in New York, but because they were put on a bus in Texas by yeah. the governor. I don't blame them. <laughs> There's some yeah, island I don't, there, I don't isn't know. there? Isn't there, yeah. Alex? There's some island. There's we, some island. Yeah, we, we have a, we have an island that we put them on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the most important issue, but to a lot of people, it, it is important. Um, more so in among Republicans, for sure. But I think that if Democrats as a whole would sort of embrace it a little bit and take it on, yeah. they can have success because. You know, as I said before, I talked to you guys this weekend about some polling in Ohio. You know, Trump has won Ohio both times. Uh, we'll win it this time. You know, J.D. Vance, Ohio, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But Sherrod Brown has been pretty strong on the border, wrote a bill to crack down on fentanyl traffickers, mandatory minimums for them, all that kind of thing. And here he is running against Trump's hand-picked Bernie Moreno and the latest polling out in Ohio shows Sherrod Brown up over five points. A five-point win for a Democrat in this state is a fucking yeah. pretty serious win. And he, uh, Sherrod Brown is a pro-union guy as you're going to get. Can't stand China. Uh, can't stand jobs that leave America. And is tough on drugs crossing the border and illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Ted Cruz is you know, not happy about his situation in Texas either. Right. So there is a formula for some success with moderation. I mean, I mean, you know... How do you explain Sherrod Brown being up five points against Trump's handpicked guy in the state of Ohio? I mean, right? I mean, I think nationally they should be looking at that, you know, and, and Sherrod Brown is a Democrat's Democrat, but he has to hmm. represent everybody. He has to play the game. You know, the big story here last week was that Sherrod Brown is not going to attend the DNC and he is not going to uh, appear with Kamala Harris at the DNC or campaign with them. Why? Because he's up five points. Let's not do anything to fucking <laughs> rock the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Because if, if yeah. he loses that Senate seat, they probably lose the Senate. Yeah. So just, she's not going to win the state, but he can just leave it be. I mean, yeah. he needs to go to the DNC no more than I do. You know, I mean, you know, it, 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 it makes no difference. But my point is, is that he has some moderate things. He appeals to working class people. He appeals to some white men that live here, and he certainly appeals to their wives. You know, uh, and like I said, women's vote, men's vote, gay vote, transgender, it's all a vote. You know, I mean, if you're a politician nowadays, to me, that's how you have to look at it. Now, Trump doesn't look at it that way. You know, there are certain people that he gets up there and says, well, I'm happy if they don't vote for me because, you know, I don't like them. Well, I don't see that as a recipe for success, but don't forget he Trump got elected, so maybe he's, like, you know. Go, going oh, back to Brown has been there forever. Going back to Alex's question about uh, you know what's important in the polling. Remember, I did do hundreds of thousands of conversations, discussions with voters, and we were pitching at that time Dean Phillips versus Biden, and Dean had a plan for immigration, and we were able to get a number of people who were concerned about that uh, to buy into Dean based on that. So it was of concern to them. It was a, it was a point, but it wasn't the main point. We uh, usually use Project 2025 <laughs> to scare people into thinking what could happen if the, and I don't mean scare them, like uh, it, it wasn't something, of course, that was irrational or something fantasy. I mean, Project 2025 is real, but they weren't aware of it. We introduced that and that was the key, let me tell you. I mean, because everything embodied in Project 2025 is scary shit. And that, you know, when we talked to them about that, that was an important thing. Yeah, well, well I think, don't they also tie the border in with crime and economy? And Trump they, tries they, to, to definitely. do Definitely. Yeah. The, the right wing has been constantly saying that a lot has, of these, has very little to do with crime. Right, but and it has very little to do with it has very That's little to do with the economy too. Mm -hmm. uh, you oh, know, yeah. there are a lot of other factors that have to do with the economy. 
uh, and uh, but uh, Trump can't talk about them because he doesn't know about the economy. He doesn't know about money. You know, he knows how to lose it. The I, I have an idea. All Trump, idea, did, right? Right? All, all Trump did was Trump continued Obama's plan that got us out of the Great Recession. You know, not that I agree with Obama with what he did, but the fact is he set it in motion. It was going, you look at any chart, and the chart is just going on a constant curve up. And so, you know, Trump talked about everything, but he just sat on what Obama had set in place for the economy. The only change he made was giving the billionaires extra tax breaks. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you know, so Trump Trump just sat on what Obama had started. And but so many people aren't aware of that. And they think it was I mean, to them, it was a good time. They they had, a, you know, the economy was good. The economy was growing. We had come out of a recession. Everyone was like, yes, this is good. We got jobs. We got money. And the inflation had not yet kicked in. So there you are. Yeah. yeah. That's why they like Trump's economy. Uh, uh, Alan? Yeah, well, he is a tool. Yeah, Alan? So, so I'm registered independent and obviously a lean Democrat, but I'm concerned about the border uh, because... We are are we are in a, at a critical stage right now. Um, Jamie something or other, he's the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, said we're about forty percent chance Jamie of Diamond. going into a recession. Jamie Diamond is that his name? Jamie yeah. Diamond. Thank you. He yes, will say that every year for about <clears throat> three yeah. years so that he can make okay. money. Okay. Well, yeah. But, but we we are close to that. Um, you know, I mean, I, you know, the Fed didn't do an emergency. When the stock market dropped, the Fed didn't care. They didn't do an emergency, uh, you know, uh, lowering the taxes, I mean, the uh, <laughs> interest rate. <clears throat> it's just kind of unheard so of. The last, last week or so, it took a real drop, <laughs> took a real nosedive. Uh, but, you know, I have I have a lot of stock, and I understand but, that, too. Yeah. But it came back up somewhat. But, but, and, but, but <laughs> eventually, it'll go right back to where it was. You know. That's my my pro, my point but, is is that a lot of people are coming in here illegally, and the people the ones of us that pay taxes are going to have to pay more taxes to feed, clothe, and house these people. Yeah, we, but but Trump we need to get better fear. control. But we, Trump's we, using that as fear, saying he's coming here to murder your kids, murder your of wife. Course, of course, he take, is. Take jobs. He's using that as a different as a fear factor. I can well, guarantee well, you ones, I won't the be The ones that don't Trump. murder people are taking your Again. jobs. You know. Hello, Don Giller. Hmm. You got my 10 bucks? Yeah, I got your 10 bucks. Okay, good. This guy pays off a bet, okay? <laughs> I couldn't even remember what the bet was, and I saw $10 show up in my PayPal. Oh. I, I'm, I made one prediction back in 68, and I thought I knew everything. <laughs> really? No. Ne next time you get to have Don personally give it to you. You'll never get it. <laughs> Did you get a plus interest? No, no, he no. no what, 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 what was it? Tell him what it was, Don. That you. It was. I, I thought that uh, that Harris would pick uh, Shapiro. Yeah. You thought that in '68? Yeah. No. In '68, I thought that. No, he didn't think that in '68. But anyway, he he uh, he said that he, he would bet me, and I think I must have agreed with you. I bet you ten bucks that he. Bucks. Should, no, you, you, you didn't agree to anything reciprocal. Oh, you just said you bet me ten bucks that. Yeah. Yeah, and and. Remember, you held up the ten dollars in this. Yeah. And also, I figured you needed the money. And you got to realize this guy's unemployed. So, you know, I mean, he can't afford that 10 bucks. So why don't you send them back $100? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, so why don't you give him $90 more back since he's unemployed and you're wealthy? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think I am, a communist? <laughs> I didn't hey, Don, say that. Don pull, a, pull a folder, please. <laughs> yeah, pull a folder. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there you did go. that one last week. You, you, you did that uh, one last week. That, we saw that. That reminds me, uh, communists, whatever. Did did any of you read how um, Kamala Harris's parents met? I don't know. The yeah. communist they meeting. Were, I don't know. They were at they were at a 
an activist meeting that was affiliated with the Black Panthers. Yeah. Mm. Who were oh. definitely communists. Yep. <laughs> no, you know, we're definitely is, criminals. That seems logical to me because they were black activists. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Their fa her father was very much a black activist. <laughs> and and he would be there with the Black Panthers, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, so, I mean, good for him, you know? She comes well, he from good has a PhD, come. and he uh, is yeah. very much educated. About he come, she what? comes from very good stock, hmm. you know, and that's yeah. So I don't know what you think or or everyone, but it uh, it seems to me like the election this year is going to come down to more about personality than it is about policy. In other words, mm -hmm. what I mean is, you know. Uh, you hear two people talking at your work or whatever, and it's like, you'll hear things like, well, you're for Biden? That fucking guy can't even put two sentences together. Or, well, you're for Trump? You know, he's a jackass. I mean, it's not, I don't really hear about, well, you know, you're for Harris or you're for Biden? They want to, you know, uh, cut the national interest rate by a quarter percent, you know? Or, I mean, it's not, it's more Josh, about... Josh, you are totally right. In fact, the, the left wing... Yes. I communicate a lot with left wing people. I maybe Charlie does too. But the thing that they are talking about is we haven't heard any policy yet. And they are yeah, really yeah. upset about that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that they're, it's important to have the it policy? Like it's more about who you can trust mm -hmm. than it is well, about I, I think what she, they want to do. I, I think she's also done a very good job, however at stating that we need to change the way we do business in this country mm -hmm. and the way we relate to each other. And I think you have to you have to solve that problem before you can solve any of the others. Close I'm the not, border. I'm, I'm not necessarily assigning, like, blame for whose fault that is or if it's right or it's wrong. I'm, I'm just saying I've just observed that it seems to be more about people's reaction to the person yep. than it is to their policy. Oh, yeah, they've noticed. I agree with you 100%. Seems that way. And yeah. I, I think the real challenge is what can we, if you want to say we, can convince people who normally have liked Trump and say, you know what, I'm not going to vote this year. Yeah. Well, they, well, they don't even have to say that word. All they have to be, oh, uh, he's, he's such an jerk this year. Can, can they convince 1% of the population in five states that he cannot be trusted? There, well, there you go. Again, I, <laughs> I'm talking about Hannibal Lecter and what a great guy he was. And right. he's not even real. <laughs> That's the Remember, funny part okay. about that one. <laughs> Remember, I, I was with the campaign that turned Alaska, which was red, for 50 years. We turned oh. it blue. And the way we did it was talking about things that people cared about. And that was the thing. In other words, uh, the one thing that everybody pretty much agrees, even though obviously the image of the Democrats is a little bit different, but everybody agrees, keep the government out of my life, my body, whatever. And yep. so we talked to people who were pro-life, and we are like, yes, we understand. We respect your opinion. However, do you really want the government to be telling you to do anything? That's the same thing that the Democrats are saying is they don't want the government in their life either. And if we can agree to keep the government out of our personal lives, then we're good. And that was something that everybody agreed on. And yeah. it's easy to get that kind of correlation. We purposely called Republicans because it was a Republican state. So we purposely called Republicans and related to them and were able to convince them to vote for a Democrat. And that's how you do it. You have to do it on the populist issues. You well, can't do I, I it on also, Democrat also, issues we've or got that. You know, we've got a certain amount of people in this country who are independents. And those people have to be convinced. And I think they're sick and tired of the weirdness of a Donald Trump campaign. And this brings a certain freshness to it that could drag over all those independents. Mm -hmm. And it could also take a lot of Democrats who were standing by the door 
saying, I don't know whether I'm going to go out and vote on this one. I don't know if I want to vote for Biden or not. I think there's enough enthusiasm here that the, the Democrats who weren't going to vote will vote. If the Democrats just come out in strong numbers, okay, they'll beat the Republicans because the Trump Republicans, if it's a rainy day, they ain't going out the door. Okay? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. That, they, Would you agree with me on that, Brian? Yeah, I agree because, you know, before the whole Kamala thing, it was like these two guys, people don't want to vote for either one of them. We yeah. want to clean slate and get two different people, right? Well, at least at least on the side that I like, it has a new person and now good. Now I really feel that my vote is going for where, where I want it, not just like right. I got to just vote for Biden because he, he's the only person that could beat Trump. Well, now I can vote for somebody who I like. So. I mean, like I said, they only need 1% and four or five different... I mean, and it doesn't matter if they get half a percent new people, half a percent flipped. It, it, right. They just need 1% yep. <laughs> to, to, to do what they did last time or to do something different. And it, and that could be it. If they do 2%, if they do 2%, that brings us to what you were talking about. When we, when is, we were calling oh Republicans, God. when we were calling Republicans, the never, the, the, okay, there were the hardcore Trump people, and it was really difficult mm -hmm. to talk to those people who were absolutely sold. Just like Josh said, you can talk to them all day long. You can give them any excuse. They were going to be Trump no matter what, and they were going to be hardcore Republican. But there are a lot of never Trumpers. Yeah. There are a lot of people who have seen now that things are you know, questionable. There's a lot of Republicans who are in that camp that you can talk to. There's also, of course, the independents, as you guys mentioned. And yes, I completely agree, again, from talking to voters, we had to get people motivated to get to the polls. If we didn't do that with the Democrats, in fact, in Alaska, they were really, I mean, it's been 50 years of a Republican so why would we change? Why bother going? The polls is going to just be the same old thing all over again. You had to excite them. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So anyway, we'll excite them. We'll, we'll play with their testicles. Uh, everybody uh, has wives yeah. and daughters. Yeah. That should be and reason enough to get out the vote. Okay, They're well, polls. we've gotten to a point in our program now where we come to a segment we call The Last Minute with Don Giller. <laughs> <laughs> He is I our, want to see him pull something from the middle. He, he is our, right, our, our, lunch our, today. Our, our, our loud, uh, our last minute man, I call him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just have one question. It was something that you talked about last Friday. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't pretend to, to, to know the answer, whether you're right or wrong. I, I'm just confused. Uh, Alex, you said, I think on Friday, that Harris had to pick a VP uh, by, by yesterday because of some time limit. And my question is, up to, as far as I know, up to 1992, every VP pick was was announced during I know, that part I of the convention. All of a sudden, yeah. a lot of that has changed. In a lot of states, they have to have the vice presidential candidate known so they can put him on the put that person on the ballot of that state. And, it had, and Tuesday was the cutoff date. At least that's what I heard from Marjorie. But then again, what does she know? Yeah. She, yeah. Actually, the cutoff date was today, the 7th. Was it? And that's why they had to announce by Tuesday, so they would know on the 7th. Okay, but, but so how, I'm right how new? That. How new is that? I, apparently, how it's more recent, because when I was a kid, they didn't say who the no. nominee was going to be until the convention was almost over. They didn't over. know who the president was going to be until... It take too long to explain right. it. it. It had something to do with the, the ballot in, in Ohio and Oops. some dirty tricks the state legislature played here to try to keep Joe Biden off the ballot originally. So it was a just retaliation for the Trump deal in Colorado, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen, our, our theme is playing. Don, your $10 is in the mail. Mm. Uh, can you all hear the theme playing? <laughs> That's what Roberta said. Okay, good. I hear it. See, I fixed the problem once and for all. Oh, anyway, hey, listen, uh, it's always, always good to have you here, uh, uh, Roberta. Uh, you, you round out this panel beautifully with your knowledge and your expertise. I really appreciate it. Uh, Jeff, great to have you still up there in Maine. Yes, uh, sir. Wow. Right, right. Are you having any lobsters up there? I had lobster 
big lobster. You get pretty yesterday. sick of lobster after a while, don't you? I know. Is, that, is yeah. it a Jewish lobster, Jeff? Uh, very kosher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good. yeah. Uh, it was the uh, it was the non trafe lobsters. Uh, <laughs> and also, thank you very much, Alan, for being here. Charlie Wallace, great having you here. Josh, you know it's a pleasure. Uh, Brian, never can have you on enough. Same goes for Bree and Don Geller. Uh, we always enjoy you calling at the last moment. And there is, oh, there's Paul Schaefer and uh, Mickey Rooney in Mickey the Rooney. show A Year at the Top. Right? Yes. Okay. Anyway, hey, that's it. I got to see you all later. Uh, uh, that's it for us right now. I'm Alex Bennett. Thank you all for calling. Uh, and uh, we say goodbye to all of you. Wave goodbye, will you? And I'll wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. Uh, next is the in intersection with Amy Manuel. She'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.